So as you know, if you've watched my videos for more than five years, um, this channel hasn't been around for five years, but my other channels that we're on, um, John the Hut Dweller, Yusuf Reyes, Yusuf Al Tahir, uh, and you guys just call me Joseph, I pretty much anglicized my name, but um, you'd know that um, up until about five years ago, I, even though I believed in God for decades, I didn't believe in an afterlife. Uh, then I, then I then uh, didn't necessarily believe in an afterlife. Then I didn't care, and then about five years ago, I accepted that there's an afterlife. Now there were times back in the past when I I did, um, but it again the idea of any type of afterlife is so. Um, departed from my normal life that I mean it's not it's inconceivable right you know we go into a dreamlike state and then there's the resurrection um, because obviously there needs to be a body for this thing to inhabit but that's probably something I'm going to struggle with till the day I die um, I'm not orthodox nor do I practice any of my religion to um to necessarily get something, not to get something in, in the afterlife or to assure, you know, some place in somewhere that, uh, I, you know, that certainly wouldn't be a hundred percent me in this life since we're in a fallen time and I struggle with passions, but because it is my identity and I think it's the right thing to do. Um, now, some, if not all, people are born with the gnosis that there's one God. There's atheists that actually, atheist scientists that actually forward this idea. James at Pandora's Box, about a decade ago, interviewed one of them. Um, I use gnosis instead of knowledge, um, but kind of that deep gnosis. Why um, belief in God? Uh, well, philosophy, in my philosophy class... Um, in 2000, in college, 2001, we talked about consciousness. And this is something I've always been interested in. If we have these physical bodies, what makes us conscious? Now, again, that can be extinguished at death because it could be the action between, you know, this receiver or this, this kind of metaphysical thing interacting with the flesh. And scientists, some scientists believe it's an interaction that happens in the microtubules of the brain. Um, so, and I've talked to other people, and <clears throat> at least uh, a couple people, or a few people, a girl and a couple guys, this is kind of how they came to the idea of that there's not just materialism in the world, meaning not just the physical, and also the idea of that there's information first and then substance. Um, this is where you might hear about the idea that the universe is a construct or things like that. Um, but basically it's consciousness. Um, you know, computers don't become conscious. Uh, machines don't, you know, become conscious. Uh, anytime we have to put any, you know, more circuitry in it, it doesn't make it conscious yet. Things like ants, animals, you know, they seem to be, whether that's because of a biological component, well, it probably is. Um, <clears throat> another thing with the, and this goes into atheism and religion, um, Lot and morality. Uh, I was explaining about Lot and the idea to think that, um, I don't know how many times I have to repeat this, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were good fathers or moral people. I mean, the children of Jacob, Joseph's brothers, actually made peace with a group of people they didn't like that was they were marrying Dinah. They said they had to circumcise them, so they submitted to the will of God. They were circumcised. And what did the patriarchs of the tribes of Israel do? They betrayed them and murdered them when they were in a weakened state. That's not very nice. That's the, People in the Old Testament weren't necessarily moral. The only thing they had going for them is that they believed in the God of Abraham. Same thing with Lot. I was explaining how Semites, especially at that time in some, some parts of the world today, view hospitality as 
an extreme that they won't break. And I get these things from Jillum89. So today we learned about that there's a culture in which one should value strangers that you invite into your house or into your home and value you should put on your own children. <clears throat> Apparently morality is relative and just cultural opinion. Hold on, where is the... So morality is objective? Where is the objective? If It's not some metaphysical point. Um... Because if you've ever been anywhere in the world or talked to anybody from different cultures or religions, um, especially not in English, you very rapidly realize that morality and ethics are very different. For case in point, partial birth abortion or late-term abortion, is that all right or is that exceedingly evil? Euthanasia. And there's people like me that say that's exceedingly evil euthanizing mentally ill people or people who are sick and there will be a greater drain on society, giving them treatment would, uh, you know, only prolong their life a year and a half. There's people that say, no, it's unethical to give it to that one person. And when we can help more people, there are these debates and debates in ethic classes all the time. And people seem to have this idea that <coughs> a partial birth abortion or even post-birth abortions like Gosnell was doing are fine because the baby really doesn't have any um, autonomy at that point and that it won't get autonomy for, you know, until around four or five and that it doesn't have an identity between itself and its mother right then and there so you can kill that infant. Um, there are many atheists that argue for that. Whereas I think that uh, abortion is evil and it is extinguishing a human life. Is the fetus human? Yes. Is it alive? Yes. And I've heard atheists try to say, well, it's not human, it's not alive, and then back themselves into all these weird corners. Um, now, should we judge women who get abortions and say that they're evil? Um, no, because again... Uh, our society teaches them one thing, and obviously people are born into different moralities, right? The Aztecs were sacrificing people. They were ripping out the hearts of the people. Many people volunteered, the winners of that ball game they played. The winners got sacrificed, not the losers. So um, is it okay to look down on the Aztecs and the Vikings and the, the ancient pagan Romans and the the Spartans and say that they were evil and that groups like the Persians were good people? I'd probably say yes. Other people would say no. That's just imperialism. Crows, gorillas, and dolphins all have funerary rituals. Uh, that's kind of strange. Humans, Neanderthals, and probably Homo antecessor are religious apes. And for tens of thousands of years, if not hundreds of thousands of years, or if not millions, our ancestors have been practicing religion. To this day, there's no clean-cut way to divide religion, culture, and morality. There is no dispute that, human, that religion serves a myriad of uses and has aided social cohesion. If religion weren't extremely useful, then why... Has it lasted through evolution and through all the hard times and in, on and every people group on all the inhabited continents have a religion <coughs> um, or what we list as religion? And I will go into part two right now so that it's easier for you guys to watch. But the next video will, I'm just going to click this off and click it back on.